Today, our family is about to fly over 11 hours from Los Angeles to Tokyo. We are flying business class, eh, sort of, but there's a catch. We'll be flying on a budget airline. Zip Air is a new Japanese low-cost carrier, and they actually offer lie flat business class seats to Tokyo at a really great rate. But there's one really important mistake you need to avoid when booking this product. Otherwise, you're gonna have a terrible time on this flight. Also, make sure you stick around till the end because we'll be telling you exactly how much we paid for these flights. Okay, let's go check in. Zip Air flies out of Terminal B at LAX. Since it's a low-cost carrier and it doesn't offer a true business class experience, there was no priority check-in of any kind and there was no lounge access included with our tickets. So it was straight to the gate for us. Okay, so we made it to our gate. We are at gate 154. Now, one thing to know about flying Zip Air is that they do not participate in TSA pre-check. So you are gonna have to go through the regular security line but luckily the clear um, little section was open this time. So we were able to at least like skip ahead. Um, but I think last time we were in this terminal was when we were flying Fiji Airways. We had the same issue. They don't participate in TSA pre-check, but clear was actually closed that time because it was so late at night here. Security was not bad. We got through pretty quick and um, just waiting to board now. As I mentioned, you won't get priority check-in or lounge access, but another thing you won't get is priority boarding. After pre-boarding finishes, it's basically a free-for-all, where everyone on the plane boards at the same time, no matter what row they're in. So it was a little hectic, but before we knew it, we were settling into our seats. Okay, so first impressions. We just took off. I'm really impressed with this product. It looks really great. It looks very fresh, very new. There's a little bit of this like pink mood lighting that adds a really nice look to the cabin. So far, the crew has been fantastic. They're super, super nice, super helpful. And of course, I can't help comparing against ANA, which we just flew recently uh, from New York to Tokyo and then Tokyo onto Jakarta. This was for our Bali trip. So far, the crew seems comparable, just as nice. Um, I actually think that Zip Air crew seems to have a little bit better uh, English skills. Yeah, so far so good. Now, before I continue telling you about our flight, let me first fill you in on Zip Air itself, because most people have never even heard of this airline. Zip Air is actually a wholly owned subsidiary of Japan Airlines, or JAL. They began operations in late 2020, so they're brand new. They currently offer four US routes from Tokyo Narita, Honolulu, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Jose. It's important to note that even though this product we're flying is essentially an unbundled, stripped down version of business class, Zip Air itself does not use the term business class to describe it. Instead, they simply refer to this product as Zip Full Flat Seat. Okay, let me explain the layout of the cabin on this Boeing 787. At the front of the plane is the full flat cabin, where you'll find 18 reverse herringbone flatbed seats in a one 2 one configuration, which means that every seat has direct aisle access. Behind that is the economy cabin, with a total of 272 economy seats. If you're a solo traveler, you definitely want to opt for either an A or a K window seat. If you're traveling with a companion, the D and G seats in the middle section will be your best bet. But if you happen to be traveling solo and still end up in the middle section, not to worry. The middle seats come with dividers, so you'll still maintain some privacy. By the way, if you enjoy videos like this about premium air travel, be sure to subscribe. We just took a couple interesting business class flights, including a domestic transcontinental product we haven't flown before, and a European business class product that was also a first for us. So you don't want to miss those videos. Also, visit our channel to catch up on our recent flight reviews of ANA The Room, Emirates, Qatar Airways Q Suites, Singapore Airlines, KLM, JetBlue Mint, and more. Okay, so let me take you on a little seat tour while we are finishing up this takeoff. So I am sitting in the very back row of the business cabin. I have a window seat. Um, so here, of course, you have a little pouch where they have some literature. Um, you've got a nice stowage shelf here. And then this is the footwell. And so far, I'm really impressed with just the amount of stowage space and just surface area for your stuff. Over here to my right, you've got this long counter space and you have a little shelf here to put things. You've got uh, outlets and uh, light and call button, little reading lamp. Here you've got more seat controls. And I have to admit that earlier I had my arm like this and I accidentally started reclining my seat. Um, so I'm not sure about this placement, but I guess once you know it's here, you know to stay, steer clear of it. Um, so you've got presets. Um, I guess you can adjust the light. 
And then there's also a do not disturb button, which is always nice on long haul flights so the crew knows to let you sleep. So you've got another literature pouch down here. And then I was wondering what this is, but it is a little pop-up armrest, which is very cool. And the tray table opens like this. So yeah, pretty spacious workspace, dining space. So there's no door or anything like that. Um, so there's not a ton of privacy on the side, but these seats are angled, so you're not directly looking at someone else, which is always nice. So one small complaint I have is that there are individual air vents above the seat, which is great. However, you don't seem to be able to like adjust the angle of them very much. So right now they're both like, blowing on my knees <laughs> which is great my knees are very cool but um, yeah that's a bit of a mess I definitely still recommend traveling with one of these I always travel with my trusty USB fan I'm gonna link that below if you haven't picked it up already um, this is a fan favorite uh, but definitely very useful because even sometimes when you have individual air vents like this the air isn't always actually reaching you so as you can see I've got two windows uh, well, like one and a half I guess right in the back, so I've got a nice view of the wing. So under the windows, there's this little button, which I guess is a shade. I was playing with it, and I guess it, it's sort of like darkening the window a little bit, uh, kind of like tinted windows in cars. It doesn't look like there's like a full shade that will come down unless maybe they activate that later in the flight. Okay, so obviously this was my first time encountering these electronically dimmable windows on the 787. And while at first I was fascinated by them, I soon came to absolutely detest them. Why? Because there's no physical barrier like you get with a traditional airplane window shade, or even with the motorized window blinds on the A380, if the sun is right outside your window, even if you've dimmed the window as dark as it goes, the sun is still directly shining into your eyes. On our return flight from Tokyo, I had to use my pillow to physically block the window like this just to get some relief. So yeah, I'm not a fan. If you've flown the 787, what do you think of these dimmable windows? Leave a comment below and let me know. The one thing I didn't expect is that they actually have free Wi-Fi throughout the whole flight, uh, which is really nice. So we'll see if I can actually get on it. They've got some instructions here. Okay, I turn my VPN off for now. Let's see if I can get this to work. Okay. Even though I can't get it to work, let this not be an indictment of Zip Air because I have an embarrassing confession, which is that even though I travel for a living, nine times out of 10, I cannot figure out how to get the Wi-Fi to work on a plane. That's why in a lot of my flight reviews, I don't really go in depth on the Wi-Fi options because I don't know what it is about my configurations on my phone, but like nine times out of 10, it just doesn't work for me at all. Or even if I get it to work for a little while, then I put my phone away, and then I come back to my phone, it stops working. I seem to be missing that little link in my brain for how to get in-flight Wi-Fi to work. This is more of a me problem than a Zip Air problem. So what's the big mistake to avoid when booking Zip Air's full flat seat? The big mistake is forgetting that pretty much nothing other than your seat is included. Yes, you're getting a lie flat seat, but in no other way is this a business class flight. First, there are no in-flight entertainment monitors on the seats. While Zip Air does offer an app where you can watch their in-flight entertainment on your own device, that's only gonna work if the Wi-Fi is functioning. And during a good portion of this flight, they announced that the Wi-Fi was down, so it wasn't just me this time. If you're going to fly this product, make sure you've downloaded some movies or shows to your own device, or you could be spending 11 hours in complete boredom. Another thing that's not included, food and drink. You have to either bring your own or pre-order your meals ahead of time when you book your ticket. They don't even serve water unless you pay for it. So I highly recommend bringing a large bottle of water with you for this flight. During the flight when the Wi-Fi isn't down, you can log onto their app to order snacks and drinks, both with or without alcohol. But there was only one actual meal you could order during the flight. And shortly into the flight, they only had one portion of this meal left for the entire plane. So make sure you pre-order your meals at the time you book your tickets, otherwise you could be left starving for the entire 11 hour flight. Another thing you might be surprised isn't included is bed linens. 
you won't get a mattress pad or a blanket or a pillow. It's just the lie flat seat and nothing else. So this is something that you can again bring yourself or order ahead of time on their website. So we actually just got our little bag of uh, bed linens that we have pre-booked and pre-paid for. And so we are gonna be sleeping much more comfy than if we hadn't made sure that we have this. Hello everyone. So I got this bag full of goodies and I'm gonna look through them and show you. So I haven't even seen anything that's in here yet. So it's gonna be a surprise for both of us. All right, everyone, let's take a peek. I'm just gonna put my hand in and the first thing I feel I'm gonna grab. Ooh, I think these are slippers. So they're slippers and earplugs. Ooh, they're so cute. They're all like, they're like super fuzzy inside. Ooh. I've got to say, there's all, all, also a sleep mask for your eyes. Let's take off my shoes and change it to my, oh God, and change it to my slippers. Yay! Ooh, I think this is a blanket. Oh, it even comes with a little bag so that you could bag it up. Ooh, so cute. Oh, it's like a flat neck pillow. I'm really confused. So it's clearly like a little neck pillow, but it's empty. And like, I don't know how to fill it with air. Oh, maybe you cover this and then you pump it with air. It's really... Okay, so I have to take this off so it can suck up air. Oh my days! Bro, what? And then like, you could like customize it. If you want like less air, you could put less. Button. So it's time for Honestly, I give this entire sleeping kit a 10 out of 10. It's so cool. I love this. I love the blanket, the slippers, the eye mask, the earplugs. Just now, one thing you may have noticed is that in that package, there's no like actual pillow. You just got the neck pillow. Um, so I would highly recommend that you actually bring a pillow of your own to the flight. We actually got this travel pillow um, it's like a memory foam pillow which rolls up into this like pretty compact package and of course I will link it below it is from Amazon by the way a little tip about these uh, little boxes that earplugs often come in you should save these because what I like to do is use them to hold uh, Advil when I travel I'm gonna show you so you can see put my little Advil liquid gels in here and it's super compact there's nothing worse than being on a long flight with a headache and having no headache medicine anywhere. So I always carry this little thing with me. Um, so I'm prepared, but then I also don't have to bring like that whole tub. Uh, even the mini tubs like take up a lot of room. So this is much more compact. Okay, I'll be doing the back and forth. And we have my other family members always do it. So it's my turn to shine. Over here we have some soap that we can just also some hand sanitizer, as you can see. And there's like this mirror. You can just see yourself. It's actually really small that you can literally touch the ceiling. And this is the toilet. And just in case you're taking a bath, you just you got you got a grip. And over here is a changing table for like um changing the baby diaper or whatever. Yeah. Don't smoke you guys and don't bring your vaporizer either. No no Okay, so they just served meal number one. So I've got my water. Um, I guess the first one I'm having is cheese ravioli with spinach cream sauce. Um, got a spoon and a fork and a little wet nap. Okay, let's open this up and okay, wow, that's uh, a lot of cheese. <laughs> All right, uh, let me dig into this and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so there is something at the bottom <laughs> under the cheese. So let me dig into this and I will let you know how it is. Okay, so the food is okay. I would say it's kind of like mediocre cafeteria food. <laughs> 
caliber, um, so don't expect too much, but it is food. You will not be hungry on this flight. I wouldn't necessarily recommend flying Zip Air specifically for the food, let's put it that way. If you're a regular viewer of our channel, at this point you're probably wondering, where's Surge? Well, unfortunately, he couldn't join us on this flight because the night before we flew out, our entire basement flooded. So Serge gallantly stayed behind an extra day to take care of that. But he met up with us a day later in Tokyo, and fortunately, we were able to all fly back together. In fact, here is Serge showing you what the seat looks like in lie flat position. So how much did we pay for these flights? Well, back in November, we came across some incredible fare sales for Zip Air. They were charging as little as $1,073 round trip from Honolulu to Tokyo and back, and as little as $1,609 round trip from Los Angeles to Tokyo and back. We jumped on the Los Angeles deal and booked the same day. Each round trip flight was about $1,600, but we also added the premium package for about $87 each way. This included seat selection, one meal, one carry-on bag, one checked bag, and one amenity kit. And just to be safe, we paid for one additional meal on top of that for each of us as well. After those add-ons plus taxes and fees, we paid $2,028.34 for each round trip ticket. So was it business class? Not exactly. But two grand is still a pretty great fare to fly round trip to Japan in a lie flat seat. I mentioned earlier that nobody should be flying Zip Air for the food. But there is one airline where the food truly is worth experiencing. So check out this video where I show you which airline it is and why it's one of the best flights we've ever taken.